question of law. This is City TV's legal education program, and here we seek to break down the law as pertains to our daily activities and so on and so forth. Now, the show is interactive. We definitely want to hear from you throughout the show, so use a hashtag, a question of law, and the WhatsApp line is 0204-447-033. My name is David Kwekusechi. When we come back from the break, I'll introduce my guest to you and we'll get right into it. All right, welcome back from that break. And now let's get right into it. The conversation for today is legal aid and how the state, state helps the poor, all right, to get justice. And a lot of the times we find it a bit, a bit challenging, you know, that it seems as though um, the law is for those who are well-to-do. Let's talk about legal aid today. My guests are here, Albert Koshiga, who is a law lecturer uh, with the UPSA School of Law, um, as well as a private legal practitioner, as well as Chrissy Kelly Delata, a private legal practitioner. Gentlemen, welcome once again. Thank it's you. Pleasure Thank to you. be here. Yeah, all yeah. right. Yeah. Right now, let's get into it. Justice. It seems as though sometimes it's for the rich and for the well connected. And um, but we're talking about legal aid today. What is legal aid exactly, and how does the state help the poor? Okay, cool, cool. <coughs> thanks for this uh, opportunity. And let me say that, well, I, I mean, you made a statement, and I, I agree that sometimes it looks like justice is for the wealthy. Um, I'm not sure for the connected, mm. but you never know. <laughs> you know, but let, let me say that access to justice mm. is one of the key pillars of rule of law. I mean, for a democratic society, mm. there must be a certain safeguard for the rights of the people. And that you can do through a judicial system, which may include processes in the courts and alternate dispute resolution mechanisms mm. and many other ways of resolving disputes. Mm. And let me say that, I mean, as, as part of our, the laws of our country, you need not necessarily have a lawyer to go to court. And I think I have to establish that. Okay. You can decide to defend yourself, mm. okay? But there are very high risks involved mm. in that. And so to avoid some of those risks, you are, you are, it's, it's proper to engage a professional, you know, to take you through the process. Okay. And I, I believe we have had this discussion before, a similar one on this same platform mm. where we talked about, um, you know, how to find lawyers and yes. all that. And I have to be honest that, um, given our economic situation and the context within which we operate as a country, um, it can be quite daunting in terms of cost to afford, you know, lawyers. Mm -hmm. And as we have said before in the past, I mean, lawyers charge according to a scale of fees. Sometimes not many people can afford that. Yeah. Not many people can afford that. Mm -hmm. that. That the fact that they cannot afford the services of a lawyer does not mean that they cannot have access to justice or they should not have access to justice. Mm. And it is the duty of the state to ensure that before any person, you know, is, is condemned or before or when any person claims to have a right and wants to vindicate that right, the state must provide a certain support system for, for that person, mm. okay? So if you can afford a lawyer, it is okay. You can pay and engage a lawyer. But if you cannot afford a lawyer, but there are, there are rights that you want to um, you know, assert mm. or claim, what do you do? Mm. Do you just sit and fold your arms? Mm. No. The legal aid is one of the things that the, 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 one of the instruments that the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General uses to actually support people. And their support to indigent people, people who cannot afford lawyers of their choice, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that support system is implemented through the legal aid scheme, right? And so currently there's a Legal Aid Commission Act which spells out how indigent people 
Uh, that's how it's been described in the law. People who are indigent, mm. who, who, who cannot afford lawyers because they don't have the means, mm. right? Uh, how they can be helped under the scheme. Mm. And so we have a framework okay. which, which deals with that situation. And as I, as I said, the, the Legal Aid Commission is one of the agencies under the Ministry of Justice. Okay. And that's an instrument through which we do this. So as we go on, we'll talk more about it. But it's not just anybody who qualifies for... Uh, so let me, let, me, let me say that generally, everybody would qualify for legal aid. Okay. But you have to show that you cannot afford. Mm. And there's usually, okay. a, there's usually a means test okay. that is used to determine whether or not you can afford a lawyer of a choice or okay. you need assistance of the state. Okay. I mean, whichever way you look at it, whether you go through the legal aid scheme or not, mm. it is lawyers who will defend you. Yeah. And the quality of work, you know, I do not think would be less than if we were to go for a lawyer of your choice whom you were actually paying. So you get the same service, mm. only that um, you go through a system where the state is the one supporting you. So, 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 so would you say, or can we say that the state is then paying these lawyers? Well, the state pays those lawyers. Okay. Okay, so, 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 okay, so let me say, say this to you. Now, you see the legal aid scheme, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's structured in such a way that sometimes, okay, there are, the, 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 the commission itself has its own employed lawyers, okay. which work over there, who work over there. So they, they take up cases and all that. But there are other lawyers who volunteer for the mm. scheme. Okay. And usually they take up cases and do those cases. And then at a certain time, they file returns mm. and some money is paid to okay. let them and all that. Okay. So that's how the scheme is working. Okay. Yeah, but it's not just mm. you know anybody who qualifies yeah. for the scheme. You must show that on the basis of means mm. you cannot afford. Yeah. All right. Um, quick, uh, quick, quick, you've seen the Ghana Court of Arms before. Yes, I have. You know what's, what's written on <laughs> Freedom it? and justice. Justice. Freedom yeah, and justice. justice. Yeah. So, so that's how important we want to elevate. Mm. Um, the question of justice delivery mm. uh, to every citizen is so important. And I think that for many years, before 1950, mm. our state has made various attempts um, to give meaning to that. So in the 40s, um, legal aid came started as the criminal assizes, okay. where persons were facing very serious crimes, mm. the kinds of crimes that would uh, uh, lead them to being killed or being in, in prison for uh, for life. Okay. Those kinds of persons mm. were given some kind of uh, legal assistance or legal okay. aid okay. Uh, for their defenses. Mm. Uh, then in 1997, there was the beginning of the first attempt to formally uh, introduce some kind of legal framework for mm. regulating legal aid in Ghana. Then we had uh, the 1997 Act at four, uh, 542 and now uh, the 2018 Act, which is called the Legal Commission, Legal, Legal Aid, Commission. Aid Commission Act, of 2018. Uh, uh, 977. So that's how important it is, okay. because as a nation, we recognize that uh, the only way to ensure democratic consolidation and inclusion is only when people have access to formal yeah. uh, justice delivery system. So that's what we have done. Mm. Um, uh, unfortunately, as I was reading around um, um, this subject yesterday, I realized, uh, you know that the legal aid scheme depends on uh, volunteers, lawyers mm -hmm. who are volunteering mm -hmm. to offer yeah. their services for free. Unfortunately, if you look at the distribution of lawyers across the regions who have offered their services to the legal aid scheme, it's so appalling. Uh, and I was looking at Greater Accra, for instance, there's just about four lawyers who are assisting the scheme. Wow. In other parts of the country, you could find um, just one lawyer for a region mm. oh, who is wow. assisting that's with the scheme. Serious. So that's how serious, serious mm. this is. Mm. Uh, and I was thinking that I was going to encourage my friend Albert mm. to join me next week uh, as we formally <laughs> apply to make our services available uh, to the scheme uh, so we can help. Uh, yeah. On an informal basis, we offer a lot of pro bono services, mm. uh, but I cannot think about the fact that, I mean, you know, on an annual basis, there are about 10,000 cases that are, you know, so that's a lot. Uh, in, in 2017, about 11,800 cases uh, handled by the Ghana Legal Aid Scheme. 
Uh, out of that, just about 7,000 were brought to resolution, which means that as many as 5,000 or so uh, were unresolved. And every year you have that, you have unresolved cases, uh, which is accounting for the huge backlog of cases mm. uh, that uh, are needing to be resolved, which is why we need more, more lawyers to do this. Mm. I hope that we'll have opportunity later to talk more about the problems mm. uh, which are confronting yeah. uh, the Ghana so, legal aid scheme. So, 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 so typically, how is the legal aid system funded? I mean, uh, okay. uh, so, uh, how do you, you know, all these lawyers that <laughs> you, the problem is nobody wants to come in there because it's it costs an arm and a leg to live in Accra <laughs> today, you know. So if you're also going to give your services pro bono, you and your family members are going to go hungry. Yes, yeah, so quick, let, me, let me see. I, you know, I have a friend who is very passionate about legal aid. So there are people like that who are, who are ready mm. to do things pro bono mm. without monetary considerations. Okay. Uh, a friend like that. So uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if a few people are doing it. People like Martin Kebu and Co are doing mm. so much you know, on that front. Um, in terms of funding, you know, legal aid scheme is a state scheme. And as I said okay. before, the Legal Aid Commission is one of the agencies under the Ministry of Justice and Attorney General's Department. Mm -hmm. All right, so mm -hmm. government con considers this very, very, very important. And the funding is, is from, from state, state sources. Okay. All right. Now, the, the, the law is such that sometimes it requires, you know, legally assisted persons, i.e. persons who are subject to the scheme, mm -hmm. to make certain contributions. All right? Okay. Certain contributions are made, and the law, the law provides for that. You know, so in order to put this in proper context, if you permit me, I'll read some provisions in the new law, okay. so that you see, you give you a clear picture of how. Okay. So I have here the soft copy of the uh, Legal Aid Commission Act 2018, Act 977, and my friend, and my good friend referred to it. Now, if you look at the long title, and every law has a long title, the long title gives you a general idea of the scope, what the law is going to deal with. Yeah. And so the long title tells you that uh, it's an act to establish the Legal Aid Commission and to provide for related purposes. I mean, this is, this is not long enough, but at <laughs> least. <laughs> and the short title is the Legal Aid Commission Act 2018. That's mm -hmm. it, at least. And it, it tells you about the object of the commission. It says that the object of the commission is to provide legal aid to A, an indigent. Who is an indigent? There is, there is a process for determining who an indigent is. And it's, it's basically, they, they use a means test. Okay. And in, in, in arriving at a conclusion whether you are qualified as an indigent, a number of factors are taken into consideration. Okay, um, including uh, your income and your relations. A, a number of factors are considered you know, to determine whether you qualify or not, which is the case. And then the second object is, is that um, the, yes, legal, so the scheme is provide legal aid to a person who has reasonable grounds to take, defend, prosecute, or be a party to proceedings Related, related to the uh, Constitution in accordance with Clause 1 of Article 294 of the Constitution. So it tells you the categories of people who are qualified. You must be an indigent yeah. or you should have been prepared to take an action or defend yeah. an action. Yeah. Now what is interesting, what I have observed is that, I mean, in our part of, in, in Ghana, for instance, we don't distinguish between um, um, uh, the, the types of issues we are dealing with. For instance, in America, they have, and sorry, in, in every legal system, you, you, have, you, have a, you have a civil aspect of issues and you have a criminal aspect of issues. Mm -hmm. Now, in America, for instance, um, emphasis is on providing legal aid when it comes to criminal matters. In civil matters, it is, it is run differently and, and the state is usually not, not I mean, under federal law, there's no provision for okay. uh, legal aid in civil matters. Okay. You know, and civil matters are usually disputes between two individuals. Criminal matters are when you have a problem with the state mm -hmm. and the state is after you. <laughs> so imagine the state trying to catch you and still giving you a lawyer to defend yourself. I mean, that's what it is. So, yeah. so, these, are, yeah. so these are some of the things that, we, but we in Ghana, we, like, there's no distinction between these. 
you can get legal aid for any of these issues, whether it's criminal or it's even what civil in this matter. I would mm. say, yeah. Good. Yeah, so I was saying that if you look at the uh, constitutional provision, yeah. uh, pursuant to which um, Act uh, 977 uh, was enacted, you, you, you get the impression that this is just a provision uh, made for persons to assess their constitutionally guaranteed rights. Uh, but we have seen that the act that have followed, including the 1997 Act and the present one, now expands the scope of the provision of legal aid to include even other civil matters. Uh, civil matters including custody, landlord-tenant um, relationship, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Um, it tells, uh, you asked the question about how this is funded. Yes. Albert has talked about yes. the fact that this is um, an agency under the Ministry of Justice. And so being an agency under the Ministry of Justice, it becomes subject to annual budgetary allocations. Uh, but in addition to that, the, 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 there's donor funding. So you have the United Nations Development Program that is offering assistance on an annual basis, uh, donations from individuals like you and me. So we encourage members of the public who are not lawyers like me who can make our services available for free. You can make donations to support, uh, uh, to support the scheme. Yeah, we could just, you know, uh, when you mentioned the aspect of donations and all, I think it's very important. Apart from the state funding, donations come in. You remember that recently, the second lady of the U.S. came to mm -hmm. Ghana, mm -hmm. and she came with her husband, yes. who is also um, a lawyer. She is a husband. Is. And I think they had, they, they met members of the UPSA Law School, okay. members of the Legal Aid Commission, okay. and they... Vice President's husband, I think, donated about 50 computers or to the Legal Aid, okay. legal aid uh, Commission to enhance the work they are mm. doing and all that. So, and trust me, state funding is never enough for any of mm. the agencies. Mm. And I, I think it's because of this reason that a lot of lawyers are not getting, you know, involved and all that. But as we say, legal aid is legal aid. Mm. It depends on voluntary, you know, um, uh, Donation, commitment, you, know, you get it. So yeah. if, you, if you really want to do it, then you are really not looking for much, yeah. you get it. But I think the, the government can, you know, increase funding because mm. it's a very important thing. Look, yeah. the, if you have an issue and you can't find somebody to speak for you, and even if you are a lawyer and you have a problem, mm. you should not try to defend yourself. Yeah. Somebody you get it. You need somebody who is not emotionally connected to yeah. the matter okay. to do a good defense for you. Right. And so it's really important that we, okay. we, we push in. Do that. Right. Okay. Yeah. We'll take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. A question of law will come up shortly. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. All right, welcome back. Now, we're still talking about legal aid and the provision that, um, you know, the uh, state makes to take care of those who can't afford legal representation. Um, gentlemen, the question I have for you is, um, how, how is it um, typically funded? Is that, I mean, is that provision within the law that says take money from X account or, mm. you know, to, to, to take care of, of, of legal yes, the, the law makes provision for that. Okay. So as, as I said early on, this is an agency under the Ministry of Justice. Mm. And so therefore, the budgetary allocations to the Ministry of Justice will make provision for 
summer location yeah. to the legal aid scheme. Okay. But in addition to that, we have donor agencies who provide general support. Mm -hmm. uh, they are not required to do that, mm -hmm. uh, but they do that from time to time, like okay. UNDP. Uh, uh, the law also uh, makes provision for individuals who are willing to make donations to the scheme uh, to do so. Uh, so, Kweku, uh, if you are visited by an angel of repentance, you can uh, approach the scheme and, and, and make it an and make a, <laughs> make a donation. Um, but, yeah. but, also, but there are also nominal fees okay. which are paid by some persons okay. who are assessing the services. Mm. Uh, that's nowhere near what they would have paid if we were hiring a lawyer to, okay. to defend them, not okay. to prosecute a matter for them. Some, just some nominal, mm. uh, nominal fees. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. I'm also curious that who qualifies mm. for legal aid? Mm -hmm. I mean, we mentioned it briefly earlier, but mm. who qualifies? Does the law prescribe? Yes. There's a person who cannot afford under normal circumstances to pay to assess the formal justice delivery system. And this determination is supposed to be made by the board of the legal aid scheme. So when you make an application, uh, I do not know the metrics which are used. I haven't seen a legislative instrument to flesh yes, out the right. details of yeah. this, yeah. but the board has to make an assessment of your application to determine whether you fall in the category of persons who cannot otherwise yeah. afford legal services um, and, and then support will be extended to you, yes. Okay, so um, I just want to provide this, this, this um, um, provision, mm. you know, in the law to support Ke what Kelly has just said. So if you look at Section 31 of the Legal Aid Commission Act, for instance, it talks about a fund. It talks about establishment of the Legal Aid Fund. Mm. And it says that it's established by this act, the Legal Aid Fund. And then section 32 talks about the object of the fund. It says, the object of the fund is to ensure financial capacity of the commission. Commission to effectively perform you know, its functions and yeah. all that. And I mean, and so, so there are funds. And this, the, the contributions to the fund come from many sources, government sources and all that are part of it. And so basically, that's how it's, it's, mm. it's run. Yeah. Mm. You know? and, and the truth of the matter is that you know, for, legal, for the Legal Aid Commission, they are supposed to be regional, uh, regional oh. offices, offices and all okay. that. Yeah, there's we no don't know. doubt there's, there's that no, all yeah. the 16 regions, regions of the country are supposed to have. They have, they not have, supposed to have. They have, they have yeah. Uh, but in terms, of, offices in terms of eligibility, yes. I mean, can I qualify? Do I qualify? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I keep saying that. For instance, I keep saying that the 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 law talks about indigent. Okay. That's what the law says. Yes. You indigent. know, you are are you an indigent? Mm. Now, whether or not you are an indigent, certain factors will be taken into consideration. Okay. I looking at you and giving your standing. I'm not sure if you can claim that you are not. You are qualified for legal aid. I mean, I don't know, but somebody else may be given their, their 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 conditions. So I'm not sure that you fall within the category of of of, of indigents. For now, you are so, not. So, so that's why so. the predecessor act yes. uh, the, of 1997, the clear provision uh, was made for that. So you must okay. show that you are a person uh, who earns a minimum wage mm -hmm. or less or otherwise any person determined by the commission to yeah. qualify okay. for, le uh, for legal aid. Okay. So principally, it's a function of whether or not you can afford the services of a lawyer to pursue justice through the formal justice delivery system, or you cannot. If you cannot, then I think that you would qualify, qualify. for legal aid. Do you qualify? Yeah. Mm. So yeah. I think we have to be making more donations and gifts to you know, the commission. Mm. And I, I think Kelly did a good job explaining the sources of, you know, money for the yeah. commission. Yeah. And the law provides for that. It talks about uh, money is approved by parliament, mm. you know, under section 27. It talks about donations and gifts, you know, and all that. We, we, we have to strengthen the scheme. I've had occasion to refer people to the legal aid uh, commission myself because sometimes uh, work can be overwhelming yeah. and you can't just handle you know all matters so sometimes you ask even relations to go there and if 
they are lucky enough to go through the process it's fair enough of course you don't just go and have legal aid yeah. you go through a certain process mm -hmm. and yeah. once you, you you are successful you be assigned a lawyer to take up your, your matter and Kogu, you know the good thing about um, this legal aid and and the scheme how it functions is that there's a there are elaborate provisions on ADR when talking about tentative dispute resolution mm. um, so at the end of the day um, Unlike, uh, unlike the courtroom, uh, where somebody walks away bitter and unhappy, uh, there's a lot of provision for this person who assess justice yeah. under the scheme okay. uh, to have their matters disposed of through mm -hmm. alternative dispute mm -hmm. uh, uh, mechanisms, mm -hmm. and everybody walks away happy. Yeah. What, so there are trained, mm -hmm. they are trained ADR yeah. okay. officers okay. who okay. assist. Uh, in resolving most of these matters. So it's not just lawyers we need. We also need trained ADR officers who are willing to pull their services uh, at the doorstep of the commission uh, so that we can have a more effective uh, you know, legal aid scheme. Yeah. 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 Um, what would you say uh, probably the most typical of the challenges that people would have in um, you know, subscribing to or needing legal aid services? What are some of the challenges that they would typically well, face? Well, I, I honestly, I, I mean, that, that would mean uh, me trying to explain some of the typical challenges that uh, clients who come to us and not go through the legal aid scheme also face. Because the problems are going to be basically the same. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, as I said, when you go to the legal aid scheme mm -hmm. and you need to defend a matter in court, you definitely, if you, if you qualify, you'll be given a lawyer who would take you through the rudiments or um, all, the, yes, all the rudiments that you have to go through if you were to go and see a lawyer of your choice mm -hmm. or elsewhere. Mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's actually nothing different. So you have to meet a lawyer, you have conference with the lawyer, you know, you will tell the lawyer your problem. The lawyer will tell you the chances of your case. All those things, you go through that, okay? So in terms of challenges, I mean, occasionally a lawyer, um, well, I don't know, Kelly, I don't know if you think of any challenges that people go to see, um, you know. The, yeah, I think the, the, I think the number I don't one see. problem yes. is uh, that a lot of people don't even know that this opportunity exists. A lot of people don't know that there's something called legal aid and that if they wanted to assess justice, they could do that effortlessly mm. and without having to pay money to do yeah. so. Yeah. Um, and the second problem is that even though people are willing, uh, or those who know about the existence of such a facility, mm -hmm. uh, don't even have access to uh, professional hands. Um, I just told you about the stat statistics about the number of lawyers who volunteer on a regional basis. Yeah. In the whole of Greater Accra, there's only four lawyers. Uh, in the Volta region, it's just one lawyer. You yeah. know. I, I don't have the statistics about the number of trained ADR professionals who are willing to provide such pro bono services. So the availability of professionals is often a problem, and I can imagine given the number of backlog of cases mm -hmm. that remain to be dealt with. We're, we're back to square one where thousands of people cannot have justice delivered to them. Oh, wow. Even in the former justice delivery system, you hear often about persons who have been in prison custody for years uh -huh. and they haven't benefited from justice. And I think it was in the era of the, uh, the former chief justice, justice Theodora Wood. Uh, she did a lot of work in, in, in sending the court to the prisons. Yeah. So high courts sat in the prisons. Yeah. And this number of persons who have been victims of um, injustice were given opportunity to appear before a court and their matters heard. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the problem. If you have a backlog, it means that a large number of people will have to wait for years yeah before their cases are heard. Often some of them just give up and give it to God. So, so those are the teething uh, problems. Yeah. Of course, a, the Constitution guarantees a right which says that everybody's entitled to a lawyer of their choice. Here, this is not a lawyer of your choice. This is a lawyer that's being superimposed on you. Yeah. 
And, and I think that, that 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 also is a problem. It may not be a problem. Um, it may not be a serious problem. Yes. It has, it's a problem for the quality of, of service which is delivered to you. It has a problem. It has, um, uh, it has a problem of your relationship with your lawyer because this is not a lawyer that you have chosen. It's a lawyer that somebody says you represent. Because I don't think that should be a problem. That's how I'm struggling, you know? to, I'm struggling to find a problem. You see, because if a lawyer, a lawyer has certain duties to the client, it doesn't matter how the person comes to you. You owe a certain duty to the client. Absolutely. You are bound by the Legal Profession Act. The ethics of the profession guide you. That's what I'm trying to, when you asked about the problem, I was struggling because once the guy has come to me, I, I, he's a lawyer, he must comply with every rule that, why, why that do you think? Yes. Why do you so, think the Constitution so, guarantees uh, the right of everybody uh, to have a lawyer of that choice? Yes. There, there, there must be something in that. That must yes. have something riding on it. And so to the extent that under the scheme, people do not have access to lawyers of that choice. I am not saying that that's such a big problem. Okay, so that's, that's not for me. That's but it's a luxury of selecting a lawyer and say, I want to work with Kweku, either because somebody has recommended Kweku, and I have met him, and during conference with him, I'm comfortable with his level of professional competence and, 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 and if you like, a relationship. Relationship, okay. And so I'm comfortable with him, let's do this. It may not be a problem, and I think that it may not be a big problem but it's just a luxury of, the luxury of what pertains in the formal justice delivery mm -hmm. system, which they may not uh, be able to benefit from. Mm -hmm. Well, very quickly, I mean, if you can just let us know, um, in terms of uh, people watching us and saying that I can't afford it, I've heard I need a lawyer, I can't afford it, what's the, the recommendations you, meet, you give to them to say, here, here are your steps, do this, do this, do that, you know, and then... Okay, cool. cool. I mean, if, if you're listening to us right now and you have a problem and you cannot afford a lawyer of your choice, I mean, we are using this medium to tell you that there is a scheme in place. It is regulated by law. It is a legal aid, legal aid scheme. And you, you can contact them, right? right? In, the, in, the, in, the, in this era of information and all that, you can find the, the numbers of, you know, legal aid I mean, on the internet, you can okay. call them. Okay. I think they are in Accra somewhere, you know, at least for Accra Ridge, they, mm -hmm. are, they are here. They are the opposite here. the ministries. The ministries, the, yes. The, ministries, opposite the ministries, ministries police station. station. They, are, they, are, they are in over there. So you can just walk in over there and then talk to somebody. They will take you through the process. And as mm -hmm. I said before, it's not automatic. Yeah. You have to satisfy a certain test. You will fill forms, you will make certain disclosures, okay? If you qualify, they'll take up your matter and do their best for you. They are, and let me say this, and now people have come to me, when I ask them to go to the, the scheme, they say that, oh, lawyer, we want you to do it for us. Like, I want, to, I want to assure them that the lawyers there are no less lawyers. They are also lawyers, trained just like us, okay? And where they are sold. I don't think that any lawyer from the legal aid scheme will go to court and knowing very well what he's supposed to do and do less than that. Yeah. So really, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Once you qualify onto the scheme, mm -hmm. you just go there, talk to somebody, and then they, they, they will help you. If, if, if you go there and they cannot help, you probably have to go back and then look for a lawyer. Maybe you decide to take your case on pro bono basis and then, and then handle it for you. But definitely, you can rely on the legal aid scheme if, mm. if you want to, yes. Okay. Of course, there are fears about also the passion with which um, a paid lawyers, <laughs> <laughs> the passion with which a lawyer who is paid to offer his professional services will approach a job. You agree? Um, no, I, I mean, I feel that, um, I feel that the, 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 the way we have run yeah, it yeah. may not necessarily have been the best way yes, to have run it. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, somebody's thinking to themselves, what value am I mm, getting? Mm. You know, but like, the good thing is that I mean, the lawyers who offer their services uh, to oh, the yeah, scheme, mm. they, they are not lawyers who have, who have been under any compulsion to offer their services. These are persons who think that yeah. we want to help. And so the, the, their passion to deliver uh, justice for, for their clients under the scheme may not be any more diminished uh, than if we're offering those services under paid circumstances in the formal 
justice delivery system. Right. Again, let me uh, repeat that a lot more of us uh, should be willing to offer our services. I think a couple of years ago, there was a suggestion um, uh, that this should be attached to the renewal of licenses for lawyers. For license for the year. Um, so that before your license is renewed for every year, you have to show evidence of having done some pro bono mm. services for, uh, for the, under the legal aid scheme. Maybe we should revisit that mm. uh, to get a lot of lawyers to buy into this uh, so there are goals as encapsulated on our National Court of Arms, freedom and justice will we'll find its full meaning. If we could just, just one more thing. So, I mean, I want to use this medium to appeal to um, young lawyers. You see, um, when you begin legal practice, sometimes things are very tough from the beginning. But it is, it is this period that you need to do a lot of learning. And, and volunteering for some of these schemes will help you build a lot, a lot of confidence going forward. You know, I can understand that when you become a lawyer, there are, there are, key, there are, there are two key competing uh, interests. You want, to make, you want to make some money, and you're also, uh, you're also concerned with doing justice. Yeah. Do you do justice and go hungry? All right? And, and most people take that view. And the reason why most young lawyers who should be volunteering for the scheme are really not, not doing that because, yeah. as you said, what's the value? What are they mm -hmm. getting from what they are doing? And so um, I think more people should be able to volunteer if they can and uh, more young lawyers should do that. I think it will be a great learning opportunity for most of them. Okay. I think so. yeah. Well, we'll take a quick break and there's more to come on Question of Law. City TV is live on DSTV. Go to channel 363. On Go TV, access City TV on channel 182. On a digital TV, please press the menu button on the remote control and run a new search on your TV. Take note that without an antenna, you cannot access City TV on your television. City TV can be accessed on a free to air digital box like the Go TV and Star Times box. City TV, it's your world. All right, welcome back. It's time for the docket. Now, today on the docket, we have an interesting one. I recently rented a chamber and hall self-contained room in Accra, and I have paid the full rent amount. However, I am facing some challenges with my landlord's behavior. He has begun imposing certain restrictions, such as not allowing visitors into the house and locking the gate when I come home late, <laughs> forcing me to find alternative accommodation. Additionally, he has prohibited me from making any necessary repairs in my room while showing no interest in addressing these issues himself. I am unsure of my rights in this situation and would appreciate your legal advice on how to proceed. How can the law help me? Mm -hmm. I, I think that I think that uh, whoever uh, the um, whoever sent the messages, I think he or she knows what to do. It's just that she, she doesn't know where to start from. Where to start from? Okay. You know, because she, she certainly has a problem mm -hmm. that she's something she's worried about. But you see, when I don't know what the the terms of their tenancy agreement is, mm -hmm. because honestly. When you are renting a place, usually, if it's below three years, I mm. mean, you may decide not to have a tenancy agreement, mm. but I encourage people to have tenancy, even if yeah. it's six months. Mm. You get it? Because the tenancy agreement would, would spell out the terms of the relationship. Mm. Now, don't, don't forget that the, the, the rent space is such that it is regulated by law also. Yeah. It's a rent act. Okay, mm. I think there was a newer rent act, right? And the rent act makes certain provisions. Mm. Those provisions 
must be respected. Mm. So you cannot go into an eternity agreement and contract out of those terms. You cannot, okay. you cannot agree to do something not sanctioned by yeah. the law. Okay. That would be acting contrary okay. to law. Okay. And so generally, mm. when you rent a property, the law is that you have the right to quiet enjoyment of your property of the property. Okay. You don't have to be the owner. Okay. You so have if a right I, to the quiet enjoyment, enjoyment of, of that, your property. Of, 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 of the rented okay. property. Okay. The, the quiet enjoyment will include, I mean, being able to carry out my social engagement. Friends mm. coming to me. Yeah. We're cooking banku and eating yeah. at home with yeah. okro. Yeah. Playing music sometimes. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. So you cannot you cannot begin to impose okay. restrictions on somebody. Mm. I mean, then it amounts to interfering with his quiet enjoyment of the property. Okay. All right? Okay. Although she's not the owner, he's not the owner. Yeah. So, first of all, look, I want to say that those conditions he finds himself in would amount to a breach of, of law. Okay. Now, the, she says that the, the, there are some renovation works that have to be done. Is that not yes, it? Yes, yes. The landlord is not doing it, and usually they don't. Mm. You can complain they won't do it. Mm. But when you try to do it, they, they put impediment in your yeah. way. It is true. Under the Rent Act, you cannot undertake any major alteration to the property without the consent of the owner. And I agree. Okay. So it depends on the nature of the renovation he or she wants to do. Some tenants can be stubborn. Mm. When they take a single room, they want to do extensions. Yeah. Okay. And make it two rooms <laughs> and all that. And that would oh, be wow. major, major oh, wow. uh, extensions you shouldn't be I doing. See. You get it. Okay. But there's some basic things that mm. you should be able to do without. You know, I mean, if um, the WC is leaking, for it's example, leaking for instance. you can resolve that yeah. issue. If the if the I mean something happens, you, mm. don't, you should do that. But don't 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 um, you know do major changes mm. without the consent mm. of the owner. Or so the in owner. this case, where yes. it says here, additionally, he has prohibited me from making necessary repairs in my room. Okay, so if you have been prevented, yeah. and those rep repairs are necessary to help you enjoy the property and yeah. he's not doing it yeah go to the uh, the, the rent control unit okay i mean Report not a complaint at the rent yeah. control unit yeah. they'll okay. invite the the the, the landlord mm. and this issue will be resolved mm. in a way if mm. if it's, it cannot be resolved mm. the courts are still there you can begin an action against the mm. uh, you know uh, land landlord mm. i mean these things we say them uh, in a very simple way, but operationally, yeah, they can be very daunting. They can yeah. be uh, cost elements. They can be all kinds of things. Yeah. But generally, I think that he has a right. He has okay. to protect that right. Okay. The landlord cannot just do anything he, okay. he wants or she mm. wants in the house. Okay. I wanted to ask you, can your landlord lock your gate and lock you out of <laughs> property that you've rented yes. because he feels that mm. you should come you, are, you should come home at a certain time? <laughs> oh, too many things are coming to Yeah, yeah. I mean, what, what's that about? Is it conceivable that that will happen? Unless, of course, um, uh, the tenancy agreement says so. Mm. Uh, were you the tenant, yeah, you see that provision, okay. but you say it's okay with me. After mm. all, I'm a quiet person, okay. I, and I'm not a nocturnal person. Okay. I, I come back home at 8 o'clock, I don't go anywhere. Unless you agree to that. Otherwise, it's a violation mm. of your right in many ways. Mm. Albert has talked about um, having a quiet enjoyment of the property. Yes. Even if the parties do not um, uh, write that in beautiful calligraphy by way of the agreement, it's implied by law okay. that a tenant must have quiet enjoyment of, of, of the property. Uh, the, the only difficulty here in this matter is uh, whether the parties have uh, determined who should keep the property in tenantable repair. And often if the repair works as a result of the, the tenant's manhandling or misuse of the property, uh, the onus is on him to put it in, in tenantable repair. Yeah. That's it. And I see something very serious. If you have to determine how soon or how late a tenant comes back home, it's virtually a constitutional violation of their right. Freedom of movement. It's a very, very serious matter. And I think that this person will have to should consult a lawyer mm. uh, to see how her problem can be can be helped. Okay. Yes. You know, before we end this, way, I was drafted a, 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 I was asked by my, my auntie to draft tenancy agreement. And some of the things my auntie was asking me to put inside, I was, I was like, you cannot put this in a, a, in, in an agreement. Like, and the same thing, that uh, the tenant should not come home after a certain time. 
because she's not too well and she doesn't want to be disturbed when she's sleeping to come and open the gates alone. These are legitimate concerns, <laughs> but you cannot, once you're prepared to rent the property, yeah. you must be ready to let go of some minimum, you know, yeah. comfort, you yeah. get it, and, and live with other people. Yeah. So I think this gentleman yeah. should not sit back. He should, he or she should uh, lodge a complaint with the rent control officer in Accra, and I'm sure they'll take it from there. Okay, fantastic. Well. That's it for the docket for today. Let's take a look at our legal trivia. Legal trivia. Did you know a bank has the power as part of its business to accept and keep for safe custody the valuables of customers, including jewelry and rare collections? This can be found in Section 281N of the Banks and Specialized Deposit Taking Institutions Act 2015, Act 930. Take note and do the needful. All right, so that's it for a question of law today. It's been a very interesting conversation and uh, the docket has you know, brought up quite a few issues and I think that you do, you do need to seek legal advice and um, make sure that your rights are not trampled on. All right, so a big thank you to my guest today, to Albert Koshiga, who is a law lecturer with the UPSA School of Law, as well as a private legal practitioner, and also to Chrissy Kelly Delata, also a private legal practitioner. Thank, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you too for watching A Question of Law. We'll be back next time with some more interesting conversations that uh, you know are happening within uh, political space and our general discourse in Ghana. My name is David Kwekusechi. Keep watching City TV.